I'm sorry it's a little bit crooked for you guys, but I'm, I'm recording it correctly on the, on the video. Let's start at uh, level one. Okay, so we're going to work our way up through the, through the ladder. So level one is right here, and it is one single equation, the equation for momentum. Now, things that you need to be aware of, the units. Of course, the units are, you just look at what the units say. It's mass times velocity. So that is kilogram meters per second. Now, uh, when we looked at forces, forces came out to be kilogram meters per second squared. That we gave a special name. That's called the Newton. Okay. For some reason, momentum, it's not special like that. It doesn't get a special name. It's just kilogram meters per second. That's it. So those units you do have to be familiar with at level one. Okay. The formula is asking you, telling you that you can solve for three things. So I can solve for masses, I can solve for velocities, or I can solve for the momentum. You should expect to do uh, each. You're definitely going to have a problem that asks you to solve for momentum. You'll have a problem that asks you to solve for the mass and one that solves for uh, velocity. So just be prepared. Look at the level one worksheet and make sure you try out different kinds of problems. Okay, from there, we go up to level two. Now, at level two, we're going to see a slight modification to the momentum equation. Instead of momentum, now we're going to look at the change in momentum, but that should not be super difficult because we've looked at velocities and we've looked at changes in velocities. You can travel at 20 meters per second or you could go from 20 meters per second down to five, and that would be a change in velocity of minus 15. Okay, so we've already seen a property and a change in a property. So this is not like a new thing. We're gonna introduce momentum at level one, and at level two, you should be able to calculate just slightly more co uh, complicated changes in uh, momentum, which will require two velocities. Of course, you have to have two velocities to get the change in the momentum, or you have to be told what the change in, in uh, velocity was. Now, you'll also be introducing a new property, which is called impulse. Okay, an impulse comes from the second law. It is simply the force multiplied by the time. So it's how long you have applied that force for. And obviously, I hope it makes sense that the longer you apply a force, the bigger the change in momentum you would expect. You know, if you apply a 200 Newton force to a car and it begins to move, and then you apply a 400 Newton force, of course, it's going to move faster. But what if you just simply apply the 200 newtons for longer? Well, then you'll still get the benefit of that additional impulse. You'll get a bigger increase in the, in the momentum. So how much your momentum changes by depends on how much force you apply and how long you apply that force. I mean, I feel like that kind of makes sense um, to most people. So you're asked to solve for them separately, not connecting them together at level two. So this is what everybody's going to be doing on uh, Friday, level one and level two. You're solving for impulses separately, or solving for changes in momentum separately on that level two, but realize this formula also has three properties. So I could give you the impulse and the time and ask you for the force, or give you the impulse and the force and say, hey, how long was the force acting for? And you would use the impulse equation to be able to, to do that. So you'll see questions involving these two guys, um, but separately from each other. Second thing you're gonna see, and this is the one I really wanted to talk about, is the conservation of momentum. So let me move this over in the center. Um, one thing that I did, and this is something I, like, I really thought about it a lot. I really put a lot of effort into thinking about, is this the right thing to do for students? Is this going to be more confusing or, or will it be uh, helpful to them? I changed from using the notation we used before, which was that the initial velocity was V naught to the letter U. This is kind of a European thing, but I really like it. I do think it's advantageous, even though you won't see it a lot in America. And the reason is because we have too many subscripts. Too many subscripts. So now we have to have object one and object two, right? Which remember before, like with forces, we just had the M, the object. Um, we only had to have one and two when we went to the third law. But guess what? That's where conservation of momentum comes from. It is a direct result of the third law of motion. Um, and so it's not surprising. We have two objects. We have to have subscripts. It can be one and two. It could be A and B. Like, let's say it's Rachel and Sarah. You could use R and S as the, as the subscript to keep straight the masses and velocities of the one object and the masses and velocities of the other object. So I personally find it much easier to use the letter U. And look, it's in alphabetical order. U, V, initial, final. Okay, so it's, it, there is a kind of a logic to it. I know the letter U doesn't really make sense for velocity. It's not the right letter. Um, but it is uh, much more convenient when you don't have to write the subscripts. So in other words, I don't have to say V naught one and V naught two. It's just too many subscripts to, to deal with. So um, I'm changing to this notation, but 
if you like that gross notation, I would never deduct. It's definitely correct. It's absolutely right. You can do V not one and V not two. That's, that's fine with me. I don't have a big problem with it. Um, I just don't want to have that double uh, subscript. So I'll write it like this and it will be there on the test. Now, what's different as you go up through the levels for momentum? Well, at level two, you will only have positive values for velocities. So that might be, for example, two people are traveling in the same direction and one person bumps into them from behind. So everybody moves off in the same direction. Uh, or you might have something at rest and something comes up and pushes it forward. But there will be no negative velocities because that is a, that's an extra level of difficulty that we're going to save for level three. So at level three, you solve the exact same problems, but now there might be a negative velocity. Maybe two cars are coming at each other. Okay, well, they can't both be positive. They cannot both be positive if they're traveling in opposite directions. Um, it might be that one of them hits something and they bounce off of each other. So there will be the potential that you might see one negative velocity in the four velocities that you have in this equation. And then at level four, we're going to open it up to everything. Any possible combination of collisions is possible. And that means that you could have as many as two negative signs for velocities when you get to level uh, four. And remember, if you get through level two, you will see level four on the next assessment because it will be there and you'll have this opportunity to give it a shot. And so it's not that big of a stretch to go from one negative velocity to having maybe two. That's not a big stretch. It's conceptually, everything is the same. It's just, you need to be like an accountant and really keep track of which way people were moving, what direction is that velocity because it affects the momentum as to whether that momentum is a positive momentum or a negative momentum. Okay, let me return back over to, so that's going all the way up through the levels on the conservation of momentum side. Let's return back over to the impulse side. So at level one, it's just the momentum. At level two, the change in momentum and separately we'll calculate impulse. At level three, we'll put the whole thing together. So this is the impulse equation. It says that the impulse changes the momentum. If you multiply the force applied times the amount of time to change that momentum, it will tell you how much the momentum uh, changed by. So in this situation, you'll get, there's three pro uh, four properties. Obviously, you need to have three of them. Now, you could like kind of revert back to your level two self and say, well, you know what? I could calculate them separately. Like I could just calculate the impulse and then get that number and then I'll set that number equal to M delta V. And that's fine. There's no problem with that. You know, it's like a little more work, but if it helps you to break it down to those steps, then great. If that's a great way to get to level three is to just use your level two knowledge and just do it repeatedly. You just do more than one step and you'll get to this, uh, to solving these problems. At the highest level, what are you going to do at level four? You're going to learn to indirectly solve for something. So let's say, for example, I ask you for the impulse. I say, hey, this is situation, what's the impulse? But I do not give you the force and I do not give you the time. Well, that's, that's the impulse equation. So then how would you solve it? You would solve it by looking and seeing if you have anything on the momentum side. So I can solve for impulse by actually making the calculation of the change in momentum. That's like pretty high level stuff. That's like conceptually, that's pretty challenging. I can indirectly solve for it by solving for the other property because I know the two are equal to each other. I, right? It says right there, the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So I can get the change in momentum by calculating impulse. I can get the impulse by calculating the change in momentum. That's what's going to happen at level four will reach the highest level of complexity that I would, I would expect anyone to be able to, to do in this class. Now, one thing I will say, this is my last comment, is the units. So impulse and change in momentum have different units, but they must be equivalent to each other because otherwise, how could there be an equal sign between these two, between these two uh, formulas? They must somehow be equal to the same units. So in impulse, the units are Newton seconds. Newton seconds. And in conservation, or uh, sorry, in, in uh, momentum, it's kilogram meters per second. But look, what's a Newton second? Well, a Newton second would be a kilogram meter per second squared multiplied by seconds. That's going to cause one of these seconds on the bottom to be canceled, and I'll end up with the same units here. Okay, so Newton seconds and kilogram meters per second are absolutely the same thing. And I would never deduct. If you put the wrong units, you say, I say, what was the momentum? And you say, oh, is this many Newton seconds? I'll say, all right, that's fine. I'll let that go. If I ask you for an impulse and you say, oh, is this many kilogram meters per second? I'll say, oh, all right, that's a little weird, but I'll let that go. And let me explain it this way. It's not wrong because, of course, they are equivalent. But I would say it's very much like this. Let's say you go to the store, I don't know, maybe Super Mall or Ford City or something, and you see a pair of pants you like. And these pants cost uh, $22.50. 
So you say to the clerk, like, oh, what, what, you know, I don't see a price tag on these. Can you tell me how much, how much they cost? And the clerk says, they're 2,250 cents. 2,250 cents. That's $22.50. That's correct. That's right. But that's weird. Don't tell me you wouldn't be weirded out by somebody. You have to stop and think, like, whoa, how many dollars? That's to be like 2,200 cents would be $22 right? It's weird. It doesn't seem appropriate for that setting. The similar thing would be on the other side. So let's say you go to the store and you're like, you're buying something. You just want to pick up a piece of, of gum. It's five cents. And you ask how much it is. And they say it's 0.05. That is correct. Five cents is 0.05, but that is weird. Don't tell me you wouldn't be weirded out by that. Like why do people talk like that when it's obviously when you get down something that's less than a dollar, it makes sense to use the term cents. And if you go over a dollar, then you talk in terms of dollars. Same thing here. It's not wrong. They're interchangeable. They are absolutely interchangeable, but I would not interchange them because it's just weird. And I don't want to be a weird person. I want to talk to people in a way that's going to make sense to them. They don't have to like put extra thought to think like, oh, let me hold on. Let me convert to like the real thing. Um, so it's not wrong. They are equivalent to each other, but I would ask you to kind of pay attention. If you're being asked for impulse, give the units for impulse. Being asked for momentum, give the units for uh, momentum. Okay, I think that basically covers everything in the entire topic of momentum. Uh, what I would like people to be doing now is, at this point, you should be on to that level one worksheet. Um, I would say that in this class, I think that there are 10 people who do not need to finish that worksheet. You should do a couple of problems. Do the first page. If everything's going well, skip it. Move on to level two. Go to the level two worksheet or go to the level two video. Remember, this is a separate video. Conservation momentum was in a separate video. And I know it's long. I'm, I'm sorry it's long, but it's... There's only two things, impulse and momentum. The entire lecture for this entire course only takes about 90 minutes. That would be two full class periods. Okay, so we're using two full class periods to get these video notes, but we're doing it outside of class so that in class you can ask me some questions. One person asked me a question in first period, which was, it was magical. It was an amazing time to hear somebody like show that they were confused about something and be willing to go ahead and turn on their mic and say, hey, can you explain this one thing again real quick? I didn't really understand it. Um, so if there's anything you want to hear again right now, feel free. Just let me know, and I will definitely help you out.